When the Dubs had their 21 point lead cut to as little as 2 with 8.15 left in the 4th, this maker breaks sideline out of bounds play drawn up by Steve Kerr with JP inbounding to Draymond has Wiggs first set the strong side pin down and watch this screen the screener action between Thompson and Curry with Clay first setting the flare for Steph who fakes curling around that pick before pinning J-Dub and then Kenrich Williams. You can't deny the top-notch scheming and execution from Golden State. Before getting further into that, just 15.1% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe, please splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and please follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. I know the dubs stopped attacking down the stretch, a comfortability level which let the scrappy young Thunder, led by Toronto-born SGA, go on a vengeful run, but ultimately championship experience and mental fortitude withstood its ground down the stretch. It's timely innovative play sets like the one we just looked at, which have heavily contributed to the Dubs forming a dynasty. Ever since now, nine-time NBA champion Steve Kerr took over for Mark Jackson in 2014. With all due respect, Steph just proved that people should have never even considered claiming Shea Gilgis deserved to start in the All-Star game over him, as while Shea has been damn good this year breaking out into a superstar, Steph quite frankly outlasted my fellow Canadian in a really fun duel to watch by the way. Josh Giddy impressed, both of the guys named Jalen Williams on the other team were given Mark Dagnall's productivity, Trey Mann was getting into the mix with his quick trigger, it was getting out of hand for the dubs, primarily in the fourth quarter where it didn't seem they'd survive in the early minutes of that frame without Steph. Despite Jordan Poole hitting a couple threes, he played pretty well by the way, but it was another great move by Kerr to take him off and go with a completely defensive unit in the final minutes, knowing they needed to stem the tide on that end of the court. In the first four games over the next few months between the OKC Thunder and Golden State Warriors, after the brutally officiated games we've gotten accustomed to seeing throughout this entire year, it was nice to see the three refs in Nick Buecher, Matt Myers, and James Williams get a lot of calls right. Let's go against the grain and respect the officials when they're good, but as I've said, for the Rotten Apple refs, we need fines and suspensions. The OKC Thunder earned a lot of people's respect though, because even after they looked gassed after making a comeback, then getting down again by about double digits, these guys kept hitting shots. For the Warriors, you have to show gratitude if you're a fan to Draymond Green for racking up 12 assists in this one. Everyone, or at least casuals, only know Dre strictly as an enforcer or a defender, but he's the best DHO role man and passer out of split actions in all of basketball. Precisely elite facilitator. Biggest storyline in terms of last night was Stephen Curry officially etching himself in as the greatest bucket getter in franchise history, amazingly passing the late great Wilt the Stilt Chamberlain in field goals made by a Warriors player. Wilt did a lot of his damage when the Warriors were in Philly, but nevertheless, Chamberlain's a top 5 to 10 player of all time at the very least, and passing a guy like that, as Clay Thompson said, was a massive accomplishment for Curry. Steph also touched on load management in the NBA, a really hot topic around the association, saying, I campaign to play every game. That's the misconnection about load management. It's never the player saying, hey, I want to sit out, end quote. I don't know about you, but I saw way too many casuals saying Shea should have gotten the start over Steph in the All-Star game, and my Toronto brother is special, but as Chicago Bulls goat Michael Jordan would say, Steph took that blasphemy personally. Responding to BS as he craves, Steph dropped 38 points on 84% true shooting, of course in response to people claiming he didn't deserve a start in Utah in a few weeks time. He also combined with Draymond Green for 24 assists. While things got dicey in the final moments, what'll be remembered from Monday night was how when the going got tough, and I mean damn tough, with the raging young Thunder having fully changed the personality of the game down the stretch, Golden State was still somehow able to remain poised enough to execute when it mattered most. As flawlessly unpredictable playsets like the one to kick off this video portray, Kerr stepped up to the moment since day one and never looked back. Also showing you that is the fact that you can't forget eight years ago in 2015, this man became just the third rookie head coach to ever win a title and the first in 33 years to do so. He needs to maintain his ego and mental fortitude like any man in charge or top player, but coaches like Kerr are few and far between. Coming from a Raptor fan whose head coach overplays his starters, I'm appreciative of how for the dubs, Steve Kerr keeps a close watch on a player's minutes who was once very injury prone in his early days, that being some guy named Wardell. 
the prolonging of Steph's career and how he's still playing at such a high level on the verge of 35 can be attributed to Kerr ideally managing his playing time whether it frustrates the hell out of fans or not. On that drawn up SLOB to put the dubs up 5 and really swing momentum at a time when they desperately needed it, Steph showed off his versatility to set two screens simultaneously. It's rarely if not ever talked about, but Curry's one of the best screen setting guards of all time. This year, in lieu of all the mileage he's racked up, Steph's 7th just behind Reggie Bullock in screen assists among all guards. He led the entire league in screen assists among guards last year. Monday night was the 71st game ever that Steph posted 8 threes in a game. The next is Dame with 26 of such outings. In terms of 11 plus 3 games, Steph's recorded 15 of those bad boys, while the next ranked Dame has posted 3. Shout out Clay for also being on that list. Additionally, against OKC, Steph reportedly became the first player of all time to post consecutive outings of recording 30 points and 10 dimes on 60% shooting from the field, 50% shooting from 3, and 100% shooting from distance. Speaking of how Steph, unlike many other top players, doesn't get a fair shake in terms of the whistle, Curry had 78 drives in the 2022 finals, resulting in 44 field goal attempts off those attacks. If you're wondering about the free throws he got as a result of those drives, all of but two charity stripe attempts. But I digress, and we also have to give credit to the ever so underappreciated top marksman, and a man pre-injuries was known as the number two biggest contributor to this dynasty in Clay Thompson, who combined with Steph for 66 points, 15 rebounds, 15 assists, and 14 threes. All around historic and feel-good night, but go watch Draymond's post-game interview after this Thunder game if you haven't yet. He said a lot of good things regarding the Warriors not being able to afford getting complacent here. My question is, what's the Warriors' record in the next five games? Get on the Community Speaks board with your take and compete for an NBA jersey or shoe of your choosing by being top five on the Speaks board. Shout out to Durnability, who says, I honestly feel as if Giannis may take a small slump, maybe about a month around 25-32% to 32 from deep, but he He's just taking steady, steady steps in that category. He's becoming so extremely dominant in what he does in the paint, so I feel as if he'll start training it more and more because many teams won't expect it, and by March, he'll be a consistent 35% plus three-point shooter, and it'll be an uphill battle between him and Luka for this year's MVP. It's honestly so crazy how Giannis is arguably the best player right now and still has room to improve. Not even the sky is the limit. There is no limit. Thanks for competing in Community Speaks. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.